Hi, I'm Lorraine Prokopiu and this is uh, one of a series of three different women's wellness classes. This first one I'm going to be doing is focusing in onto the pelvis and specifically trying to find and engage the pelvic floor. So I'm going to be using the Align Pilates A8 Pro Reformer. This one's got a tower attached. I am going to use the tower a little bit, but almost just to hold on to rather than attaching any specific springs. Um, I'm going to use the reformer as a base to start with and then we'll get working on actual reformer work. And I'm also going to use the circle. So I'm going to start sitting down and just trying to get a sense of orientating around the pelvis first of all. So right now I've got quite a few springs on here so that the carriage doesn't move and I'm ready for footwork. So I've got on this particular reformer, I've got one green and two red on, so a fairly strong spring. I'm just sitting on the reformer, placing the hands onto the edge and I'm just going to shift my weight from butt cheek to butt cheek and have a sense of my sit bones into the floor. And then I'm going to just reset into a nice upright position and just have a little think about my pubic bone at the front and my coccyx at the back. So your coccyx is the very end of your spine, your sort of tail if you like, right close to the back passage. So we're going to roll the coccyx round between the legs to the pubic bone and then in towards the belly button heading back to a little half roll back and then I'm going to return and stick my coccyx out to the wall behind me. So I'm just doing a little slump and over correct you could call this or a seated cat cow. Just getting that sense of moving the pelvis and I can feel my sit bones as I'm rolling back almost off my sit bones towards the coccyx and then I'm pressing down into the sit bones and then coming forward. So just getting that awareness into the pelvis and your pelvic floor is the muscles between those four bones. So pubic bone at the front, coccyx at the back and then the two sit bones either side. And then I'm just going to come back into a stop. Then I'm going to separate the legs a little bit and then lean forwards, just resting the elbows on to the knees. And just think about the inhale and exhale. So inhale through the nose and then exhale, I'll also through the nose. You could exhale through the mouth, but I like to keep it just slow and steady out through the nose. But try and inhale through the nose, you warm and filter the air. And then exhale feeling the tummy fall. So as you inhale, the tummy will come out and sort of towards your thighs a little bit. And then as you exhale, you might feel the tummy comes away from your thighs a little bit. So we're gonna exaggerate that. Inhale, let the belly drop and relax. And then exhale, let the belly gently lift. We're also going to think about the pelvic floor. So as you inhale, there's a sense of widening almost through the sit bones. And then as you exhale, a sense of connecting your sit bones. Let's try that again. So inhale, let them widen. And exhale, think about connecting them. Now there's probably not a lot of movement happening, but we're trying to find that connection into the pelvic floor. Thinking now about the coccyx and the pubic bone, as you inhale, almost reach the coccyx out behind you. Well, again, no movement really is happening. But then think about drawing your coccyx towards your low belly area. So that area between your belly button and your pubic bone. I like to think about drawing it up in that diagonal line towards that low belly area to find your deep tummy muscles and your pelvic floor. So let's do a few more of those. Inhale, allow the sit bones to widen, exhale they connect and again inhale allow the coccyx just to almost reach behind you and then exhale draw the coccyx up towards your low belly area and then see if you can coordinate all of that together. So all four bones are connecting and you get a sense of drawing your tummy muscles up and in. Good, we're going to do a couple more of those. Inhale, 
Now you shouldn't you see, you might see my eyebrows raising as I'm working. <laughs> That's usually a good sign. <laughs> but you shouldn't feel like you're working your buttocks and levitating off. It's just a gentle connection into the deep tummy muscles and the pelvic floor. And those muscles often work together and that's fine to do. All right, let's come back up into the sitting position. We're gonna do quite a bit of this, finding those bones and finding the muscles as we work. But let's do a little bit of a spine twist here. So take the opposite hand to the opposite knee and then reach across and find an easy twist. And then we'll do that same on the other side. Just twisting out through the spine, feeling the weight down into your sit bones as you work. I'm just going to do one more on each side. Lengthen and twist. Reset centre, lengthen and twist as we come to the other side. And then release. And we'll do a side bend as well. I'm just going to place the hand to the front of the reformer here, coming up and over and side bending, just kind of avoiding that shoulder rest there. Up and release. And we'll do the same on the other side. Up and over and for the side bend. And we'll just do one more each side. So I'm trying to keep my sit bones down level onto the bench, bringing that awareness into that area. Finding a side stretch as I reach. And we'll do one more. That makes us even. And then we're coming back into the center again. Right, let's work with the um, circle. So I'm gonna shuffle forward so I can bring my knees quite wide. And then I'm gonna pop the circle between the knees, just above the knee joint on that nice sort of fleshy bit there. My feet are coming in a little closer than my knees are being pushed by the circle, holding nice and upright through the spine here. And then very gently apply pressure into your circle to squeeze it. Now you may or may not change the shape of the circle. It doesn't matter too much, but what I want you to do is get a sense of firing up through the inner thighs and then release. The inner thighs and the pelvic floor are quite closely associated. So again, if we're getting into the inner thighs, we can get into that pelvic floor as well. So inner thighs almost come up and into the pelvic floor and then out through the crown of the head. And then release. So you get that lovely length through the spine right from those deep core muscles. Right, I'm going to roll the pelvis back and squeeze the circle and then release back up into the sitting position again. Let's do that again. Roll back, squeezing the circle, and then release. So feeling like you've got enough control through that circle, as it can be, I do think the resistance, especially on some circles, can be quite strong. So be nice and gentle with yourself. If you're changing the shape of the circle, that's fine. If you're not, that's fine too. But just feeling like you're working your inner thighs. Okay, here comes the change. We're gonna roll back and hold that half roll back, pulling your tummy muscles in. Release the circle and then squeeze it for three, two, one. Release as you return to the sitting position. We'll do two more of those. Roll back and squeeze, release, squeeze the circle. Three, two, one. Release, return. One more round, roll back, squeeze. And a squeeze, a three, a two, a one release another change roll back and hold the circle hold the squeeze and then think about trying to roll your pelvis further back so coccyx goes round into the belly button and there's kind of a three step there and then return there's not you can't see an awful lot of movement but i can feel it so rolling back we're holding so rolling pulling your tummy muscles in rolling pulling your tummy muscles in i'm really trying to make this kind of concave here and then returning one more round, roll back, hold the circle, roll the pelvis, roll the pelvis, roll the pelvis, and return. So now we're gonna put those two together, roll back and hold, release the circle a little, squeeze and roll at the same time. Squeeze, roll, squeeze, roll, and then release everything back up. So we're really just ramping everything up into the inner thighs, the pelvic floor, the deep tummy muscles. So squeeze and roll, squeeze and roll, squeeze and roll. Release, return, last round, rolling back, hold, release a little, and then squeeze and roll, squeeze and roll, squeeze and roll, and then release all the way back up. We'll take this circle out. We'll just add a little spine twist here. I'm gonna bring my knees and feet together now. Try and hold them together. Keep the sit bones nice and connected to the reformer here. Holding the circle, a bit like a basket against the chest and then twisting to one side and return to center and then going to the other side. I'm trying to keep my knees glued together here. 
so that the spine twist just happens at the waist. And then I'm gonna add some pulses here. So twist, release a little bit, we'll go pulse three, two, one, and center, other side. A three, two, one, center. I'm gonna go one more each side, pulsing three, growing tall, and center. So you could think about that pelvic floor going out through the crown of the head if you could. And center, and release. So when we are working the pelvic floor, you want to think about, um, as well as connecting it, you're trying to relax and lengthen as well. So that's why I'm talking about widening the sit bones and connecting them. So that's that constant um, ebb and flow, shall we say, of the deep tummy muscles and the pelvic floor work. So I'm gonna put my circle here because I want to pick it up a bit later. So I'll leave it there. That looks about the right position. It's about, at the moment, it's lined up with my head rest, let's, or shoulder rest. Let's see if it's uh, in the right place when I get there. But I'm gonna lie down on my back right now and rest the feet onto the foot bar. So just feeling the thighs dropping into the sockets of the hips here, and I've got that nice, easy, neutral pelvis. I'm gonna do a bent knee fallout. So inhale, allow one knee to go out to the side, and then exhale, return. And we'll keep going with that, moving the thigh in its socket and keeping the pelvis nice and still as you work. Now just to bring the focus into the pelvic floor a little more, as you take the knee out to the side, almost imagine that sit bone is going with that as well. And then to bring that leg back up again, I'm thinking about connecting that sit bone back towards the other side. It's not actually moving, but there's a, a sense of finding those deep muscles to draw the knee back up again. Stabilizing through the pelvis as we move that leg. And then I'm gonna come back into the center. I'm gonna bring one leg tabletop and I'm gonna go again. Exhale, reach the leg away. And then inhale, bring it back in again. So I'm stabilizing again through the pelvis and moving the leg. And I've got to support the weight of the leg with my tummy muscles a little bit here, working the front of the hip too. I'm going one more. Bring it back in, land the foot. Let's do the other side. Tabletop, and then again, away we go. So if you're holding that still, the muscles are doing what they should be doing. Nice and relaxed, you've got a flat belly. So there's no need to grip on for dear life, but it's quite nice to have that sense of awareness of your tummy muscles as you're working. That's my last one. Bring it back in. So I'm gonna have a little think about the pelvis here. Let's move this up and out the way a bit so hopefully you can see a little bit better. Perhaps I'll move this arm out the way as well. So I'm going to, I've got a little bit of a space for my blueberry. And then I'm gonna exhale, draw my coccyx round into my belly button and try and squash that blueberry a little bit. Just really relaxing through the backs of the thighs but trying to find my tummy muscles. And then inhale, drop the coccyx towards the mat. So we're thinking again pelvic floor as you draw your coccyx to your pubic bone, then pubic bone to the belly button, fires up your tummy muscles a little bit more, and then releasing to neutral. So it's quite subtle, and I'm trying to avoid at this point in time squeezing my buttocks or pushing down through the feet, which kind of looks kind of like that. I've got a lot of squeeze going on through my buttocks. Maybe my tummy is pulled, um, pulled in too much and there's a lot of bracing going on. So we wanna relax with that. And it's just really super subtle thinking about your deep tummy muscles and deep pelvic floor. I'm gonna go one more. And then releasing. All right, we're gonna move the carriage. I'm gonna connect my heels to the foot bar thigh bones dropping into the sockets. I've got that lovely neutral pelvis, a space for the blueberry, and I'm just gonna push up and down, controlling through the legs as I'm working. So pressing up, keeping the pelvis neutral. As I bend the knees, I think about reaching the sit bones underneath the foot bar. So here's that sort of connect the sit bones a little bit and then widen the sit bones a little bit. 
Just again, bringing your awareness into the pelvic floor as you move. And it responds to your movement. It doesn't grip and hold all day long, but it does do a lot of support work for you <laughs> as you're working around your day. So let's give it some love. <laughs> all right, bring it all the way back into the stopper. We're gonna take the feet wider now. So you've got kind of a V shape with the thighs, heels are still connected to the foot bar. And then I'm gonna push up and down here. And there's definitely that sense, especially as I bend my knees of that widening the sit bones and then connecting the sit bones as I push away. Keeping the space for the blueberry all the time, nice heavy weight down into the sacrum. And the beauty of being on the reformer here as well is is the reformer is really supporting my spine and I can get lots of feedback as to where my pelvis is in space. I can feel the weight of my sacrum onto the mat. I'm going one more. And then bring it all the way to the stopper. Then I'm going to bring the knees and feet together and we'll just work some calves while we're here. I'm going to go hip distance, I think, up onto the toes, pushing up, staying here. I'm just going to reach down for six, five. Keeping the pelvis nice and still as I'm working, feeling the bases of all 10 toes pushing into the uh, foot bar. Now I've lost count, I'm gonna go one more. <laughs> Bring it back in again, I'm going again, stay there when you get there, and then we're alternating legs. So we're running here under control try and make sure you don't bang into the calves pelvic headlights stay square space for the blueberry in the small of the back three two and a one all the way up onto the toes and then nice and controlled as you bring the carriage back to the stopper okay i'm going to work some single leg now so i need to change the springs so I'm gonna um, drop that green off. So I'm gonna go with two red. Now I was aware that my strap fell off as I was working. I'm gonna need those in a minute because I'm gonna do some feet in straps. So make sure that your straps are ready as well. So two red for me, so it's kind of like a medium spring for your single leg work. So I'm gonna roll down onto my back again. Toes onto the foot bar. We'll bring one leg into a tabletop position and then we're just pushing up and down on that single leg. Heel is lining up with the sit bones, nice and controlled. We're gonna do a single leg reach now. So your bicycle, again, controlling through the pelvis as you're working. I'm going to take a developé prep. So I'm going to bend and just hold here and then straighten the leg, feel a nice stretch into the back of the thigh and then bend and reach the leg away. Let's keep that going. Bend, reach to the sky, bend, reach away. So you're getting a lovely stretch into the back of the thigh and a feel of length from the heel to that sit bone on that leg. We'll go one more. Reach and then bend, reach away. Let's do the other side, tabletop. Just take a moment to get yourself organized. The heels are lining up with their respective sit bones and then we're pushing up and down here. Just carrying that leg, pelvis staying neutral. And then we're gonna bicycle. So push up, reach that free leg away and return. Supporting the weight of the leg with the abdominals. And then we're gonna take this into our développé prep. So bend, reach to the sky, a bit of a stretch. Bend, reach away. So if the leg doesn't go all the way straight, that's fine, straightish will do. But this standing one does want to go straight, but then if you can only go so far, that's absolutely fine. But you're finding your stretch and you're feeling the length through the back of the thigh right from that heel to the sit bone. There we go, that's my last one. And then release all the way to the stopper. Let's find your straps, they're still there thankfully. And then we're gonna push up part of the way, one foot in and then press the other foot in. I'm gonna just do, do a bend and stretch. I'm gonna set
separate the legs. Again, just a little bit more control required through the inner thighs, flexing the feet and then reach away. So I'm flexing my feet as I bend my knees and then as I reach away, I'm pointing my toes. Reaching the sit bones underneath the foot bar, push away. So again, there's that kind of almost breath. You could almost imagine your um, pelvic floor kind of move, well, it does move with your diaphragm. So it's the diaphragm of the pelvis, if you like. Let's go one more here. And then I'm gonna bring my feet into a first position and we'll do some plies here. So we've got this lateral rotation through the hips and my heels are staying glued together. And you can do this nice flex and point with the feet if, that, if you can coordinate that. If you can't, just try the bend and stretch. Trying to keep the heels together and I'm really trying to zip up my inner thighs all the way up to my pelvic floor. And we'll do one more here. And then I'm gonna bring the knees in and see if I can find my circle. It was in the perfect position. All right, so we're gonna pop the circle between your ankles. And again, we'll go back to that bend and stretch again. So just really controlling here. And I've got to work my inner thighs just to hold the circle still. And then I can squeeze as I reach, bend, control the release. Squeeze to reach, bend, control the release. I'll do a couple more here. Squeeze and reach, bend to release. Two more. So using the extra resistance of the circle to fire up the inner thighs even more and see if you can get some more focus into your pelvic floor. Great, I'm going to, I just wanna reset that circle a little bit, so feel free to do if you need to. And then we'll just lift and lower here. So lift, and then using your tummy muscles, buttocks to push away. So you might find that just holding the circle is enough for you, and that's absolutely fine. You can feel your inner thighs, they've gotta work just to hold that as you carry the circle up and down. Or you can add the squeeze. So reach the legs away, squeeze, or you can see me getting a bit of a shake on, and then release and control up. Press and squeeze, release as we control up. Let's do two more. Release as we control up. Last one. And release as we control up, good. And then we'll just take that circle out. I'm just gonna pop that down off to one side bringing the legs up, and I'm just gonna take the legs out for a little stretch here. And I'm just gonna take some easy pulses, nice and gently getting that inner thigh stretch. And then bringing the legs up, and I'm gonna come out the straps now, finding the foot bar, releasing those down, just replacing the straps. What is it, there it is, all right, and then I'm gonna pivot around come on up into sitting. I'm just gonna pop the circle off to one side so I don't trip over it. <laughs> so I'm going to come up into a kneeling position now. I want to do some cat cow, some kind of down stretch work. So I'm going to take one of these reds off. So I've got just one red on. So it's a light, light to medium spring. So coming into kneeling on the carriage, feet against the shoulder rest here and I'm holding onto the foot bar. My bottom is quite low towards my heels. I'm just gonna cat-cow, so no moving of the carriage. So deepen the tail tuck into your cat and then lift the coccyx into the cow. So it is a, it does feel slightly different here because you've, the hands and the shoulders are higher than your hips and your, I've got quite a, a knee bend here because my bottom is quite close to my heels. We're gonna go with that. So let's think about that pelvis. So in this cow position, the sit bones are widening. You've got some length from your coccyx to your pubic bone. And then I'm gonna draw those sit bones together and think about the coccyx coming around and into my belly button. So having, again, we've got that sort of almost the breathing through the pelvic floor <laughs> as we work. So there's kind of a widening as a lengthening here 
as you come into this uh, cow position and then a connecting as you come into the cat. One more round here. Now I'm gonna hold the cat and almost imagine I'm pulling the carriage in towards the stopper, deepening that tail tuck. And then I'm gonna start pushing the carriage away with my thighs, uncurl, so I'm now into like an extended cow, can we call it that? And then I'm gonna come back, bending the knees underneath me, leaving my bottom back in space, and tucking my tail to return the carriage. And then let's go again, pressing the carriage away with the thighs, uncurling out into this extended cow, yes, and bend the knees, and then tucking the tail underneath me to bring it all the way back in. So you'll notice this one, my head and shoulders are staying still in space, and it's the legs and the spine that is moving. Now my head does move, I just realized that, but my head is moving only just as a response to the spinal movement. So I'm looking down at the springs right now as I push away, I end up looking forwards. And then tucking the tail underneath. I'm gonna make a little change here, add a little bit more choreography. Uncurling the spine going into my extended cow. And then I'm gonna keep that extended cow position as I'm gonna pull the carriage forwards with my shoulders. So now that's moving in space. I'm gonna push back and then bend the knees and pull it all the way home again. Use that tail tuck to bring it home. Find your tummy muscles, find your pelvic floor. Go again, uncurl. Stabilizing through the whole of that low belly, tummy muscles, lumbar spine. Bring it back in. <laughs> and then return all the way. Good, we go again, one more like this. Uncurling into your extended cow. Lift, shining your breastbone light forwards, push away, and then bend the knees and bring it all the way back home again. I'm gonna go again with another little change, pushing away, uncurl the spine. We do three of these extended cow moments. There's three, two, last one. Push away, hold, bend, and control back in again. Let's do two more rounds. Uncurl, find your extended cow position, then pull that extended cow in and out three times. Last round. Press away, bend the knees, and tuck that tail underneath you. Really try and feel the pelvic floor deep tummy muscles, or just bring your awareness into that area. Last around, pushing away. We've got three, two, last one. Bring it in, press away, bend the knees and curl the tail underneath you. I'm coming all the way back up into the upright position. Good. And then we'll do, um, actually, I'm going to turn around first. So let's do it this way. I'm going to come down. I want a really light spring now. So I'm going to take it down to yellow. Taking off my red. So it's one very light spring. And then I'm going to come around into a kneeling position here and place the hands down. And I'm going to do a, a thread the needle. My hands are quite wide here, so let's give it a whirl and see what happens. I'm going to lift this hand up and turn and then thread through. Just for a little bit of rotation here, I'm bending the supporting arm. Lifting up and turn and a thread through. A little bend of the supporting arm. And then this last one, I'm up and release. Bring that hand down. And we'll go again onto the other side, lifting and then thread through. I'm just trying to get that feeling of rotation and you'll feel like your bottom is kind of sticking up in the air and we're gonna go with that. Last one, lifting and then land that hand back down onto your silver runner here. Then I'm gonna walk the hand slightly further forwards, make sure my thigh's connected to the shoulder rest and then we're gonna do that tail tuck again. So cock six round into your belly button and move the carriage forwards just an inch or so and then release the coccyx to the sky. Let's do that again. Coccyx round into belly button, pulling my tummy muscles in, 
release the coccyx to the sky. Fixing through the upper body, so that upper body is staying still in space. Lower body, pelvis is moving. And again, as I lift the coccyx to the sky, there's that sense of length through the pelvic floor. That's the last one. Take a little rest back to the stopper and then we're gonna take both hands over to one side and we go again, pulling the pelvis forwards and then release. This feels a little more like a cat, so I'm pulling my pelvis towards my ribs and my ribs towards my pelvis. Although I am keeping my sort of head and my upper body as still as I can. I'm just doing two more here. Getting into the tummy muscles a little bit more, kind of ramping up that in this exercise. Releasing back, other side. Although we've still got that tail tuck, so you still want to get a sense of coccyx round into your belly button. Pelvic floor joining in with those tummy muscles. Last two. And a one. And then release. And I'm gonna land at the stopper, take both hands out wide, and just dropping back into a little shell stretch here, just releasing off and just work around your shoulder rest there as best you can. I'm releasing and coming on up. So I'm gonna head over to stand on the runners now and hold on to the tower. So nice and gently off, remember your carriage moves easy with only that yellow spring on. So make sure you've got probably grippy socks on, make sure you, or, or even barefoot, if that's the way you're working. Holding on to the tower here and then coming on up. So I've got feet on the runners, hands onto the tower here. Good. So I'm going to, um, so I've got my elbows a little bit bent here, and then I'm just gonna drop back. So I'm slightly leaning back. And then I'm going to find myself into a sideways V. So I'm gonna stick my bottom out and find that position. So make sure you feel like you've got, your feet aren't gonna slip forward, so you feel nice and secure there. And I can widen my sit bones into this position. And then I'm gonna draw my coccyx round into my belly button and wave the movement up the spine coming all the way up into the upright position. I'm just gonna keep my elbows straight and that's very slight lean back. So I'm gonna go from the head to the tail. So I'll pull the breastbone into the belly, one vertebra at a time coming forwards as I drop my body weight back and then I finish off by sticking my bottom out and I find that sideways V. Now I'm gonna draw the coccyx round into the belly button and come all the way up into this vertical position. It's called spread eagle. So breastbone pulls into the belly, wave the movement from the head to the tail, and you finish off by sticking your tail out so there's a widening through the sit bones. I'm lifting my coccyx, and then I'm gonna draw it back underneath me and come all the way back up again. And we'll do one more round. Rolling down through the spine and then feeling the reaching of the sit bones behind you. And of course, you should feel a hamstring stretch there. And then tuck the tail and come all the way back up again. Ah, nice. Right, we are going to do some squats now. So I quite like holding on, staying up here. You could, of course, just do your squats on the floor if that's better for you. But I quite like staying up here because I can use this to support. So I'm gonna drop my bottom back into a squat and then I'm coming back up again. So I'm thinking about reaching the sit bones, uh, widening the sit bones as I drop down, smiling the sit bones, reaching the coccyx behind me and I'm seeing how low I can get into that squat. So going all the way down to a deep squat here. If that's available to you, of course it might not be. So you just take it as low as you feel comfortable going. And I realise I'm going to just walk my hands down because I'm hitting my wrists a little bit there. So I just want to do that so I can drop it just a little bit lower still. And then I'm going to come all the way up. Nice. And we're going to go one more time, but this time we're going to come down and we're going to just stay halfway down. And I'm just going to do some little pulses here. 
feel a bit like I'm water skiing. <laughs> right, so you're going to imagine that your sit bones, you're pulling your, as you pulse, you're being aware of your sit bones. You're pulling your sit bones together with your pelvic floor from the inside. You're pushing your sit bones together with your buttocks from the outside. And then we're gonna come all the way up into a standing position. Oh, great, well done. And then come all the way off, carefully holding on. Check where your feet are. Check how far down your step is. You might wanna use the long box as a little helping hand there to come on down. And then we're just going to finish off into the standing position. Look down through those feet. Parallel your feet. Nice, wide, easy collarbones. We're going to come into another squat again. So just let your bottom reach out behind you. Just a small squat and then coming back up again. So smiling the sit bones out behind you again. Connect the sit bones. Imagine they're going up and out through the crown of the head. So you've got that sense of length as you're going. And this is your last one. Hold when you get there. Feel that easy length. And well done. I hope you're much more aware of your pelvic floor now.